Hey guys, it's Kristen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am a second year doctor of physical therapy student at Mercer University in Atlanta, Georgia, and I make videos here on my channel all about my journey in physical therapy school. So if you're new, I would love if you could take a second and subscribe down below. But today's video is one that I am so excited about. One of you guys actually requested that I film this in the comment section of my last video, but I'm going to be talking all about pelvic floor and women's health physical therapy today. Before I get into it, I just wanted to say I'm not an expert at all. I'm a second year physical therapy student and everything I'm saying in this video is stuff that I have learned either in class or through research on my own time, through talking with pelvic floor PTs that I've shadowed, through podcasts, through books. So again, not an expert in any way at all, so please don't come after me if I say something that is not quite right, but I'm going to do my best and put a ton of resources in the description down below as well. I also do want to say that both men and women have pelvic floors, but in this video I'm mostly going to be talking about women because personally that is what I know the most about and the population that I think I'm going to be working with in the future. So just wanted to let y'all know there is men's pelvic floor physical therapy and if you want to research more about that, that is a thing as well. But in this video I'm mostly going to be focusing on women's pelvic floor and women's health physical therapy. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first of all, what is your pelvic floor? I will insert a few pictures here, but your pelvic floor works with your diaphragm, your transverse abdominis, and your multifidi as kind of a canister, and it should all move up and down together when you're doing anything. And when there's some imbalances here, this can lead to dysfunction in the pelvic floor muscles. So like any other muscles in your body, the pelvic floor muscles are muscles that they just happen to be located internally. So pelvic floor therapists work with both males and females to help with pelvic floor dysfunction. Main functions of the pelvic floor are to support your internal organs, to help with stability, sexual function, and obviously there's sphincters there for using bathroom. So when these muscles aren't working properly, it is a big deal because it has so many super important roles. So pelvic floor PTs are trained in how to help treat pelvic floor dysfunction. So next I'm going to talk about some common conditions that they treat. So the common conditions that a pelvic floor physical therapist treats are urinary incontinence, and this can be all across the lifespan. It can be with a young athlete that does a lot of high impact sports such as gymnastics, running, CrossFit, or it can be a mom during pregnancy, after pregnancy, someone post-menopause, or incontinence affects people in the entire lifespan, and I feel like that's something that people don't know, but that's a really common reason that people seek out pelvic floor physical therapy. And there is stress incontinence and urge incontinence. So stress incontinence is when you're leaking urine when you're running, jumping, doing high impact, things like that. And urge incontinence is where you just get the sudden urge to pee and you can't hold it. So these are conditions that a pelvic floor PT can help treat. And some of the other common diagnoses that pelvic PTs treat are pelvic pain, pain with intercourse, pain with gynecologic exams. Um, they work a lot with patients post-cancer, like post-breast cancer, working on scar tissue, regaining shoulder range of motion, post-hysterectomy, postpartum, like I mentioned before, whether that's having problems with leakage or just other pelvic pain, low back pain, hip pain, anything like that. Another really cool thing that pelvic floor PTs do is they work with patients post spinal cord injury that might be having bowel or bladder dysfunction, so kind of a neuro component there if you're interested in neuro. They also help with things like painful C-section scars, maybe they have some pain radiating from their scar, pelvic PTs can help with that. There also is pediatric pelvic floor PT for children that might have trouble or may be delayed in their potty training. They could benefit from pelvic floor physical therapy. So as you can see, there are so many ways you can go with this, so many routes. Some pelvic floor PTs will really like hone in and specialize on say like just postpartum women, just patients with urinary incontinence. But there are so many options and so many specialties and I just think it is so cool and so interesting. And these conditions are treated by doing a full PT exam externally first, so just looking at the typical things that you would look at in an orthopedic eval, how all the hip and low back and core, all of those muscles are firing and how everything's working externally. 
And then usually, if it is necessary, a quick internal assessment will be done as well to see if those muscles are weak or hypertonic, which just means they're very, very tight and that can be causing some leakage as well. So that is just a small part of the exam, which I feel like a lot of people think pelvic floor PT is like all internal work. And through the shadowing I've done, I realized that it's not. And a lot of patients don't even need the internal work at all. So how does pelvic PT differ from normal PT? You take your typical history, start off by doing just a general orthopedic exam, just ha how you would with a normal PT eval. And then, like I said before, if you feel an internal exam is warranted, you can then perform an internal exam and see if the patient would benefit from strengthening of the internal pelvic floor musculature or working on the tightness in the pelvic floor, either there at PT, the physical therapist, helping do some manual therapy of the pelvic floor. The patient can also work on that at home with the use of a pelvic wand which I will insert a picture of here. But overall, it is really similar to just outpatient ortho musculoskeletal physical therapy like I have mentioned in some of my videos. So a home exercise program for a patient would look pretty similar to an ortho patient. So a lot of strengthening of the core, of the glutes, of the hips, of the back muscles, all of those muscles that kind of support the pelvic floor with that abdominal canister, making sure all of that is functioning. There is a big component of stress and mindfulness and practicing proper breathing to help with pelvic floor dysfunction. There is a big role with diet. So it is just a very like holistic approach. So how do you get into pelvic floor physical therapy? So like I said, I am a student. I am in my second year and you learn a little bit about pelvic floor PT in school. I know some programs teach a little bit more than others. They might have like a women's health elective or something like that. Unfortunately, my program does not have this, but you are able to take continuing education courses on pelvic floor as a student after your second year, after you have taken your musculoskeletal coursework. So I'm currently in my musculoskeletal coursework now, but once I've done that in August, I'm taking my very first pelvic floor class, and these courses are offered through the APTA and Herman and Wallace, and I will have them linked in the description box down below and I'm going to read the class description to you guys because I don't want to leave anything out or say anything wrong just about what you learn in that class. The introduction to pelvic floor function, dysfunction, treatment, and interventions. It is geared to the PT who wants to synthesize the information and apply it to individual treatment programs for urinary incontinence or musculoskeletal components of urogynecological pain syndromes such as chronic pelvic pain, vulvar pain, interstitial, interstitial cystitis, I can never say that word, Painful bladder syndrome. This continuing education teaches eval and treatment interventions by instruction, instructional assessment of the pelvic floor muscles with internal examination and biofeedback assessments. This information is immediately applicable to clinical practice. So I'm going to take that course and learn how to do the internal exams and treatment. And hopefully without foundational knowledge, I'll be able to do a 12 week clinical through my school as my last final clinical rotation, kind of a more specialty site. And after that, you can keep moving up in the continuing education coursework, and you can just start working as soon as you graduate as a pelvic PT, or you can pursue a board-certified women's health specialization. There are two different ways you can get certified as a board-certified women's health specialist, and I'm gonna read it again so I don't mess it up, but the first one is to submit evidence of 2,000 hours of patient care licensed USPT in the specialty area, so treating pelvic floor, within the last 10 years, 25% must be within the last three years. So you can apply for this certification or you can do a residency program, which is typically one year long and you'll be working and also taking a little bit of coursework and it's kind of a more structured program. This is definitely something I want to research and learn more about because I may be interested in pursuing one. Who knows? I say that now, but that could definitely change. But yeah, you enroll in an accredited residency and complete the residency. And I think that's the gist of what I wanted to say. I know this video was super short, but I wanted to do a whole dedicated video on my channel with this information so people can access it quickly because I really want to spread the word about this field of PT because we need so many more pelvic PTs out there. Women need our help and they need your help. So if you're slightly interested in this at all, 
please, please, please consider it and DM me on Instagram. I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of you have. And I will leave a list of my favorite resources right here on the screen if you want to learn more. There is a book, Heal Pelvic Pain, that I've read that has a really good intro to kind of treatment of pelvic floor dysfunction. There are two podcasts that I listen to regularly, Pelvic PT Rising and The Core Four Momentum. And there are a few Instagram accounts as well that post really good content that I will have listed here, like I said, but specifically the APTA Pelvic and the APTA SSIG, SIG, they have like monthly, sometimes more than once, more frequently than once a month, but they will have like Zoom talks with like guest lectures about pelvic floor. So that's how I've learned a lot of what I know. So you guys should definitely follow them. You can sign up for the free Zoom webinars, learn a little bit more, see if you're interested in it. I go to most of them, so I can see y'all on the Zoom too if you go and show up there. But again, I'm pretty sure that's everything I wanted to say, but if you have any more questions, do not hesitate to reach out. I love you guys all so much. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.